Welcome back. The very first time our first guest came on our show, it was to tell us about her third hand lettering book, Hand Lettering for Laughter. Well, she's joining us this morning to share about her brand new book, Practice Makes Progress. My Creative Journal comes out tomorrow, and our resident cra crafting queen and best-selling author, Amy Latta, joins us this morning. Amy, this is exciting. We were just talking about all of your hand lettering books. Yes. But this is something a little different. So first, this is not a lettering book. Uh, tell us why you wanted to write Practice Makes Progress. So, Brett, as you know, I've got a stack of hand lettering books that I've done. I have five of them, and uh -huh. they teach you all different kinds of lettering skills. But, you know, that's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to reach out. As you know, I like to share all kinds of craft projects on the show here and inspire people and families to create. And so I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to challenge myself and do something that would appeal to anyone and everyone who wants to be creative. Well, and this does exactly that because this is sort of a, a, of a journal. Tell us a little bit about Practice Makes Progress and what's inside. What does it feature? I'd love to. So I took 25, I think, 25 different quotes wow. about creativity. Mm -hmm. And they're not quotes that I came up with. They're ones that you've probably heard and seen. And for each one, I did illustrate it. And then I wrote a little reflection paragraph about it. Just wanted to talk about it a little bit from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And then I created a bunch of different prompts to go along with the theme of each quote. So some of them are things that you do, activities right here in the pages. Sometimes you fill out a chart or you circle words that appeal to you or describe you, or you might be sketching something in here. And then sometimes it asks you to do something off the page. You're going to take the idea and then run with it, doing things that you enjoy. So maybe it's lettering, but maybe it's woodworking. Maybe oh. it's writing a poem. Maybe it's singing or playing an instrument. Maybe it's working with clay or sewing, embroidery, quilting. I mean, the possibilities are literally endless. Well, and that leads me to my next question. This book is for everyone, right? No matter how creative you feel, women, men, adults, kids? Yes. I mean, it's mainly targeted for adults, okay. but kids could certainly, you know, especially older kids, my kids at being teenagers could mm -hmm. certainly follow along with it. You could do it as a family, uh, but it is intended for everyone. It could be if you want to be more creative and need a little nudge, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, even if you're a professional artist like I am, there are still things in here to challenge you. There's a chapter that talks about your projects half done. I know we all have yeah. partially completed projects, yep. and it's about going through those and and sorting through what do you want to finish and what are we going to finally say goodbye to. There was a chapter about organizing and creating a space where you can be creative. Yeah. Uh, just all kinds of different You've topics. Done that. You've I done have that done that, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. Which, which was very cool to see that, that play out for you too. Now let's talk about a sample of a chapter. Sure. You had mentioned to me before the show there's a Picasso quote about yes. kids being artists. Let's talk about that. Yes, I have it right here. It says, every child is an artist. The problem is remaining one once he grows up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, so many of us, we start out with every confidence in our artistic ability. And then as we get older, we play the comparison game. We look at what other people are doing and say, oh, well, that person is really good at that, not me. You mm -hmm. know, or we tend to think about things as like an artist has to be Bob Ross painting happy little trees. <laughs> and that's not the case. You can right. be creative. You know, my dad uh, was a bricklayer his whole career, and he was so creative with brick and stone and made these gorgeous fireplaces and walkways. I mean, creativity doesn't necessarily mean and easel and paints. Yeah. You know, it can be so many different things. So the exercises in here, um, I ask you to think about what was your favorite thing to doodle as a child? Do you remember something that you like to doodle? Oh gosh, um, probably animals. Yeah, Okay, absolutely. when I was a real little kid, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always drew, it was like the same little scene, it was a house and my house had a big oh, yeah. tree next to it and a little sidewalk, <laughs> you know, and so that was what I would draw. My and, son um, likes to do that too, draw yes. the house with the trees and playing outside. Yes, yep. mm -hmm. so sometimes just reconnecting with those things that we loved drawing and doing. And I also have you think about your artist's toolbox. Like when you were a kid, what were your favorite things to craft with? Mine, of course, you already know this with <laughs> glitter, and I still do. Uh, but, you know, other things, scissors and finger paints yeah. and paste and things like that. And then it asks you to think about now what's in your toolbox. What is it that you can be creative with? And then my favorite, this is the kind of off the page thing. It has a spot here where you can color these little face pieces in. I don't know how oh, yeah. well you can see those, but it's eyes and nose and, and mouth. And you can color these in, cut them out. I actually want you to cut them out of the journal <laughs> right. and stick them on stuff in your house. 
because as kids, we just love to be silly and do these fun things. There and if are, you yeah. don't really want to cut up your book, you can also use Google Eyes. Like this morning, we were talking, we had a Google Eye explosion. My thing fell, and there were Google Eyes everywhere. And the guys were like, we love these because you can put them on literally anything, and it's yeah. hilarious. So you put them on you know, your phone, you put them on your coffee mug, and it's just reconnecting with that childlike spirit the way that you used to approach art when you were a kid. I'm not sure everybody's a jar of just Google Eyes, but if not, <laughs> they probably they probably need one. They should. Uh, I mean, because everyone why not? should. Yeah. Why not? Uh, all right, let's talk about where viewers can get your book. It is coming out tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow is finally the release date. It's Excellent. been pushed four times, but yeah. tomorrow is the day. It's Tuesday, two, 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 two. Yeah. And so oh, it's coming right. out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's coming out on Tuesday. Okay. It's perfect because you know March is National Craft Month. I don't know if you knew that, but you I know celebrate. It now. And yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so it's a great way to treat yourself. You can get this on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, Target.com, um, a lot of the bookstores and local bookstores as well here in Harrisburg and the surrounding area will have it on the shelf tomorrow yep. and then you can always order it online you can even pre-order today and maybe Amazon will get it to you tomorrow uh, that's smart and you know spring's coming up Mother's Day other yes. things too and uh, we are looking forward to that and we've got Noah coming up with some St. Patrick's we Day sure stuff do. so we're looking forward to that Amy thanks as always great Thank chatting you so with you much. yep we'll see you again soon stay with us everybody we're back after this